in for the big show radio off because we're here for the model trains today and more importantly the people we're going to meet along the way so stay tuned it's going to be the best springfield show yet SC and H, the newest tourist railroad in the region. All right, guys. So we're at the Saratoga Corinthian Hudson Railway, and I'm here with Andrew Lease. And uh, I hear you're you're kind of new to the whole circle of people here. So how did you get involved here? So I actually got involved. Uh, I came up for the uh, a run with the Alco Historical Society back in June. Um, I have, you know, had some previous experience with some other scenic railroads in the area. So uh, while I was there, um, my wife kind of mentioned that, you know, she could tell that I missed it. Um, so she said to say something. So I talked to our conductor and um, it happened that our conductor was Hal, the owner of the railroad. Um, and I actually also um, have known Brad Peterson, um, you know, one of our main engineers for quite some time. Um, so, yeah, so Hal and I emailed back and forth quite a bit and got into a rules class in, uh, in late August, and um, they haven't been able to get rid of me since. That's awesome. And uh, so you're, you're like a conductor kind of figure? Yeah, um, I do a little bit of everything. So um, I've done some brush cutting, um, did some beaver dam pulling and some maintenance away work, uh, but I've also done kind of onboard kind of stuff. Um, as well as uh, kind of training to be a trainman. And then, um, you know, I, I play kind of the, the part of conductor, I guess is the best way to put it. Yeah. Not quite a conductor yet as per the railroad rules, um, but I take the tickets, I, you know, I punch the tickets, tell stories, that kind of stuff. Um, but also anything else that the railroad needs. Um, so oddly enough, um, oddly enough, uh, there was a kind of a joke going around about how tall I am um, and uh, how the... Um, with Buddy the Elf um, from the movie Elf. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's kind of my life. Um, so, yeah, next thing I know, um, Hal's buying a Buddy the Elf costume, and I, I played Buddy the Elf for the, the Christmas trains. Um, so, yeah, so I kind of, you know, willing to do anything for them, um, and the more I've gotten to know Hal, um, and especially the rest of the team, um, yeah, the more I'd be, I'm willing to do. So, um, yeah. That's awesome, and I think that's a big thing. People see the people on the trains running the running their trains, but there's a lot going on behind the scenes, especially on rail like the Adirondack Railroad. You know, we have state help, but the SCNH, you know, they got to keep that line up and running. And so it's it's great to meet the people behind all that. So thanks for talking and enjoy the show. Excellent, thank you. You too. This is an epic high rail, truly, truly a icon. And uh, of course, we have the. Number 11. All the narrow gauge people are out here. Beautiful weather for this today. There it is, number 11. Putting off some nice smoke. Wish I had my camera for some actual photos. But enjoy this because we did not have this last year. I didn't realize this. This is a reproduction of Main Central 470 whistle. So that's that's interesting. Um, 470 is is currently awaiting restoration. They have a whole group that's uh, uh, working on that, and they also own F units and stuff. All right, guys, we're in uh, number 11. Shall we give it a blow? Do I need two hands for this, or you think I can? All right, here we go. Yeah, it's harder than you think to, to get it to quell, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's definitely harder than it looks. <laughs> Thank you, guys. I'm like, where are those? Great.
grade crossing sequence complete. Guys, don't forget we're on the hunt for a Z-scale train. So if we see any Z-scale, you'll be seeing that in the video. I'm, I'm skeptical if I'll find any, except for the occasional layout. There's one right here, that's Z-scale. And I'm not sure if the other one's also Z-scale, but we're looking for stuff to buy. And I keep forgetting, you can't go down there if you want to get through. There's so many people here and the doors aren't even open. This is These are all just exhibitors, vendors, manufacturers, and media people like myself. Atlas Model Railroad. Once again, these guys make so much great DNH stuff. It's hard not to love them. They got some great buildings. Um, their their True Track system is a great alternative to Easy Track, and it's top quality too. And you can reuse it as regular, you know, roadbed and ballast track. And they always have great products. They have an end scale version as well. Showcasing lots of great products. Atlas, my favorite my favorite thing Atlas makes is the locomotives. Great freight cars too, but they make lots of great DNH locomotives. Oh, and look at that. Look at that, folks. Vermont Railway 201 and 206. We're foaming here, guys. This is like this is like a prototype RDBD. This is awesome. Guys, it's like they know how to get you here in the, in the Northeast, in New England. Vermont Railway, Housatonic, and Guilford. I wanna switch to N scale now, help me. There's a Vermont Railway boxcar too. Okay, I am here at Atlas with Matt Mosikis. How, how are you? And uh, your role at, at Atlas is? I'm an R&D project manager, so design products, do paint schemes, and also a little social media too. Once again, sounds like a great job. I've been talking to a lot of people that's like, okay, that sounds like a fun job. So, so what are the new things coming to Atlas? We got a ton of new things coming out in both HO and N. So, for example, we have our. Uh, Nimbo Sharo metric cars. They're due in the summertime. We have uh, MP15s arriving with ditch lights. They actually are there in our warehouse now. Uh, as well as on the shelf over there, we have uh, the former True Line trains tooling, the Point St. Charles caboose. It's a fan favorite of everybody's with all the marker lights and ditch lights. As well as decorated tea boxes. And we have a ton of uh, N scale locos coming in soon. Dash 840Bs, SC60s, SC60Es, they're all slated to arrive in April. So lots of new products coming in, lots of new stuff. All right, and I, I saw over there at the N-Scale layout, I almost want to get into N-Scale. There's so much Vermont Railway and Who's a Tonic, and those are my favorite roads. So roads like that that are, you know, less common and, and more regional-focused, um, how do those do compared to, like, the Class 1 road names? They actually do very well for us because some other company you know we're we're a family-owned business so and we're all enthusiasts we like enjoy seeing the regional stuff to, you know they're, they're fan favorites especially in the northeast the susquehanna housatonic providence and worcester worcester it's it's all you know it's what we see and what we enjoy and we just happen to be like new england new jersey you know anthracite rail fans at atlas so while other companies may not do the regional stuff because they say, oh, it doesn't sell well, we always found that like we, we move ours pretty well and they do just as good as a class of ones for us. I mean, I have, a, I have and I'm acquiring another Vermont Railway in HO scale, and I hope to see another run of those GP38s and GP40s. Um, so, I, you know, I, I enjoy it. I know a lot of people who do, so I appreciate seeing those. Um, so my last question with like supply chain issues. How did those impact Atlas specifically? Well, last year in particular, China had a huge COVID spike, which limited the amount of employees the factories could have. So people like people in China weren't traveling from their homes to the cities and because most of the workers are from rural China and they migrate to the cities and the factories. So those people weren't coming. So we we're still getting consistent product, but just less of it. 
this year we're anticipating it to free up and get much more product in as well as making more announcements so we're optimistic about what we can bring in this year as well as upgrades to our existing molds and stuff like that as everybody's seeing with the ditch lights and even we're going to try to do a metal coupler so phase out the acume eventually yeah so that's uh you know i love atlas i don't love the plastic coupler so much so i really appreciate hearing that um but atlas you know you make some great models so thanks for being here at the show and uh, hope you enjoy it of course thank you Fun fact, this very locomotive, Amtrak 108, passed through this very town yesterday, and I saw it. They have lots of phenomenal locomotives. They've, they've really come a, f a long way from, you know, Athern, it's a name you've come to rely on in the hobby. You, you see them, their stuff from the 70s and 80s, you know, the blue box, and then all the way up to today, these, these top-tier models, CSX, those are... Those are be popular around here and you know everything else i'm here at atherin trains and i'm here with uh my name is john and what's your role here at atherin i am the product manager for atherin trains so i uh, do, do all the new product development is this your first time here at the amherst show this is yes all right awesome it is absolutely uh, gonna be a great year um can't wait to see your new product but what are some new products that you can talk about that have been announced but you're still waiting to uh get them out well, um, most of what we're showing today at the show are existing products, so products that have been announced and are actually delivered. Um, so they're in stores right now, and that's what you'll see on the, the shelves around us here. Um, our current packet of announcements includes the brand new National Steel Car, both the 6400 and the 6000 cubic foot versions. Uh, that's in both HO and N scale in Athen Genesis. Uh, Last uh, yesterday, we announced the next packet of announcements, which included another run of uh, very um, uh, asked for uh, Genesis F units, uh, Genesis Jeep 39-2s. Um, we have the brand new uh, re retooled FMC 5347 in HO scale, uh, which I have a, a sample of here. And then today, we're announcing a couple new items that we saved from yesterday top secret stay tuned for that so enjoy the show and we'll take a look at some of these models but uh thanks for talking yeah absolutely okay i'm not filming this entire train i still see it coming around the end of the layout all the way down there this this is an insane this is an insane so look at this train guys this is this is Yes, this train is yes. Very long. This is like a scale CSX or CP ethanol train length. The foamy lash up from last night has returned on a intermodal. This is about the same length as the one I saw this morning down at the West Springfield yard. Not all prototype here. Cross over here on the outer track. That's 
Holy power move, guys. It's a Mega Conrail unit set going somewhere. I guess not very far. I sold Jake my 7312 this morning. Yeah, I had a 7312 here. I sold that to Jake because he wanted it. If 11R had good lash ups. couple of foamy heritage units and both I've seen in real life so that's cool you know auto rack train yo look it's Palmer sub rail videos NCT, try not to make everything turn into the Vermont rail system. This is going to be hard. New York and Ogdensburg surveying customers in the St. Lawrence region with uh, all kinds of solutions, including locomotive shipments. That's a unique thing that they do. Put them on ships going to other countries and other parts of the world. Then you have this train showing all of the commodities that Vermont Railway hauls. I'm not going to go through them all, but as you can see, a lot of different bulk materials. And of course, passengers. I like how much the New York and Ogdensburg is featured because it usually gets no representation. And this whole thing seems to be about the New York and Ogdensburg, which is cool. System map. This is my little, um, my closest little segment right here. And then of course in Burlington, I, I see them as well. But New York and Ogdensburg, we're, we're going to check them out too. Okay, I'm, at, I'm here at Rapido Trains with. This is Jordan from Rapido. Jordan Smith. And what is your role at Rapido? Oh, I do a little of everything. I do a lot of our YouTube videos. I do uh, uh, help out with the guys doing some, some product development stuff, research, social media, various things, uh, kind of all over the place. I think I recognize you from a couple of YouTube videos, which are top tier productions. Um, what gives you guys the ideas for some of those YouTube videos that I've watched thousands of times? Um, a lot of that is uh, Jason and Jeremy are, uh, are Jason's the kind of the, the, the head honcho of the company and Jeremy's our video production guy and uh, I get to star in a lot of them so I can put my ideas in but it's just like we have a lot of freedom to kind of do what we want so we can uh, make some interesting content. Nothing can go wrong here. That's awesome. I think that's one reason that, you know, everyone knows Rapido as the guys who have fun on their job. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, that's, that's the important part. So 
I, I'm seeing a lot of great models in, in front of me and the, the turbo train, the, the cabbage cars, and, and a lot of them are not very well known. So what, how do you gauge um, if a model will be successful that's not well known? Um, it depends on the model. Uh, for the, uh, the, the turbo liners in particular we've got in front of us, uh, these, uh, uh, we actually announced them as a conditional project, so we weren't sure if people would want them or not. So we basically announced them, we say, Here, here's the project, uh, get your order in by such and such a date, and uh, if uh, we get the orders that we want, we'll, we'll go ahead with it. And the orders were extremely good, and uh, we've got the tooling sample, actually these are the production samples here, and that's, uh, that's an example of how we will sometimes do things. Otherwise, um, a lot of the time we'll, we'll just we'll see what the prototypes are, see how many road names, uh, what kind of a variety of the cars uh, they are, and, uh, and, and go with it. And usually we're, we're pretty good. Uh, with uh, with how popular a model would be that's good to hear and i mean the quality of course that's always there and so the 44 the 44 tonner that that's something that i was not expecting and that's not a bad thing i think they're they're awesome what where where'd the inspiration of that come from um well there have been 44 tonners in the past uh this time we're do our model is uh it's it's featuring the details of three different uh phases of uh, a 44 tonner because they no two were alike they were all a little bit different and uh we've developed an all-new drive system an all-new chassis uh we're now putting uh keep alives in them or, uh, or, or uh, kind of like a capacitor in the engine uh, it's the first time we've doing, done that and uh it's it's a, just a neat little locomotive that can be used in almost kind of any kind of circumstance, industrial switching, here you got a short branch line or a short line, um, they're very utilitarian. It's a much needed locomotive and, uh, that we uh, thought would be good for the market. Absolutely, and, uh, and especially with the updated internals, but of course the details as well. Yeah, absolutely. And we're, we're putting in a whole bunch of prototype specific detail in these bottles. We've got our, our, uh, our first samples here, which are kind of not uh, entirely finished, but uh, there's still a lot of add-on parts that need to be put on them. But uh, it's uh, it's it's a really neat model that will uh, hopefully appeal to a lot of different uh, modelers in different eras. So, final question: the M the M four twenty. I uh, I'm having a hard time resisting this, but I'm not seeing Mohawk Adirondack in Northern, which is one of the last operators of the M four twenty. Is there any chance of that for a future run? You got to give me some hope. Uh, absolutely, uh, we've done uh, several different road names in this release. Of course, there will be more releases. Uh, this one's been very successful, so I'm sure we'll do a third release with all new road names, maybe some short lines in there that uh, we haven't done yet. Awesome. Jordan, thanks for talking, and enjoy the show. It's uh, looking like a great show this year. Thanks. Uh, hope you enjoy the show, too. Uh, 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 I, I think Thomas's E-unit is, is broken, and I also think you lost half of his face. I'm totally not going to have nightmares. What are you talking about? Caddo, USA. They got the T-Track layout. They got their new Amtrak stuff, Amtrak 108. Once again, we saw this unit pass this very place yesterday. And they have some that I haven't even gotten to see yet. The Pepsi can, Phase 1, Operation Lifesaver, Midnight Blue, and 46, which I did actually see in Maine. Scale trains. I forgot their motto, but it's scale trains. And they got lots of great products. Got some kit classics here. Always sharp looking models at a great price. N scale stuff. Good to see you. Thanks for coming. Thanks for coming by. CN Heritage units. I love me a model of that uh, 3069. <laughs> Try not to fanboy here with uh, Drayton from Delay and Block, but we're at Scale Trains. So, Drayton, what do you do at Scale Trains, for those wondering? So, I am a brand marketer. I do a lot of copywriting for Scale Trains. So, whenever you get your, uh, your Scale Trains box, uh, the bullet points on the back of the box, I go through and I modify them for packaging. Anything else you want to share about the process of the Jivo development? Well, the, the one challenge about Jivos is there, there are more variations and details than any other locomotive that we've ever worked on. I've got a spreadsheet that's 60 columns wide. Guys, I found an influencer. Oh, it's God. it's Chris Rotman, the guy from TikTok. <laughs> so what, what are you doing here at the show with all these fine models? Uh, some stuff, that's all my crap. That's Dave's stuff, all this stuff here. So just having fun, yep. always. All right, so, so 
he has a YouTube channel, but you're mostly on TikTok. Yep. So check him out. Um, what is your TikTok handle? Just your name? My name, Chris Rotman. Uh, it's at Chris Rotman. All right. C H R I S R O T M A N. So search him up on TikTok if you if you have TikTok and uh, you make some pretty cool videos. Oh yeah. So I'm here at Soundtracks with Norman. And what's your role here at Soundtracks? I'm actually the support representative for Soundtracks. So if you call up and ask a question, I'm the one who's going to be answering the phone. Okay, so sounds like you got to know what's going on here. And hopefully you can explain this Lego train because this has caught my attention. So what we've done here is this is actually powered off of a battery. And the reason we're able to do this and still have sound is actually because our newest generation of sound decoders, the Blue Nami, have a Bluetooth chip integrated into the decoder. So you get all the same features as a DCC sound locomotive, but now you have wireless control without a DCC system required directly from your phone or tablet. So if we look on here, you can see that I have the app pulled up and it's connected to this loco. So even though this guy is running off a of battery, I still have control of speed, lights, and sound. Wow. Additionally, I have access to all of the configuration options for this decoder through easy to use menus right here in the app. So you can see I can go in here and I can change the horn from this guy's got a Leslie RS3K. Let's grab a K5H. And you can hear the horn just changed. I can even go so far as to change the prime mover. So let's grab a 645 non-turbo. And you can hear it shut down and is now running through the new startup sequence for the 645 non-turbo. Okay, so I started off being interested with this as a Lego train. Now I'm interested in this for my HO locomotive. So does this work on any DCC or DC system? Um, it works on DC, DCC, or even just a battery. Because all the decoder needs now is power. So this guy is running off battery. This guy has a blue NAMI, but he's running off that NC power cab. Um, he's actually being controlled from that tablet over there. And same thing with the Mopac here. It's running, uh, it's, it's just using the track for power, even though it's DCC and it's being controlled by that tablet over there. Um, these can still function as a DCC decoder. If you don't connect to it with the app, it's still just a standard DCC decoder, functionally identical to our existing Tsunami 2s. Okay, I'm actually blown away. I'm actually going to go look these up and probably order some for some of my engines. Thank you so much for talking. Right. Thank you. This is a double track standard. Clubs can decide if they want to do two, three, or four tracks on these modules. And I'm not seeing any trains. Oh, I see a Z scale. Hang on. So guys, last year at the show, I bought a bunch of Z-Scale stuff. And I'm going around thinking, ha ha ha, I got the smallest train. And then I discover this thing called T-Gauge. It is half the size of Z-Scale. And I still can't believe how small it is. How, how is there a motor in that thing? How, how do they stay coupled? You know, I can't even keep my Z-Scale stuff running. How, how I, 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 I just, I, I need T-Gauge now. It, it's so, it's so tiny. These guys make the entire hobby stay connected. And if you know, you know, they make the couplers. As you can see, 
It isn't a simple thing. There are lots of different types. It is no simple thing. I, I have several types, and I only buy Katie, Kitty, however you want to say it, because they're the original and they're the best. Taking a look at Class 1 Model Works' newest offerings. These are pre-production, I believe. That looks 3D printed, actually. It's crazy how the how the prototyping process has changed with 3D printing. And over here, we have the 3D scanning going on. Um, mini prints will spin you around and turn you into a model. So check them out and be sure to book at whatever shows he's doing this at because it is a very cool process. Class 1 Model Works, a brand new company, and they have some great looking stack cars. And they got the containers to go with them. These are, I mean, a lot of the people make containers, but you always need containers, so check them out. These are really great looking. They have uh, rotating, rotating uh, roller bearing things that in focus. Um, great quality models. Um, nice and heavy too. That's a big problem with stack cars, so check them out. Class one model works. All right, guys, this is like the second person I met who I'm so excited to talk to because I'm a huge fan. Dave, Onondaga Cutoff. Um, for those who don't know, what is what is the Onondaga Cutoff? Because it's, it sounds like just a railroad line, but what is it to you? To me, it's childhood memories. It's uh, There's a lot of passion wrapped up in what we see when we're young. You love trains, and it's exciting. And growing up in New Jersey, there's some cool main lines down there. But you, my family was from upstate New York. We would go visit, and in upstate New York was a, was a, a double track main line, high ballast, real signal bridges. 50 trains a day, it was just exciting. And so the Onondaga Cutoff is my tribute to that energy. It's, 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 it, what I try and do is recreate some of that excitement that I felt as a kid when I was watching trains. Awesome. And you have a, you have a book. It's, I don't know if it's new anymore, but uh, what's the book about? And, and how, did, how did you get to the point where you wrote a book? Well, I worked really hard on the signal system on the Onondaga Cutoff because... Part of having a model railroad mainline that's controlled by signals is, is centralized traffic control, which is the logic system that's behind how the signals work. So modeling that was really important to me to capture some of that feeling. Um, I recruited some friends that know much better than me that were a huge help. And what we ended up being able to do was come up with a really functional signal system. And as we started to do operating sessions, some of the local people took notice. And I got referred to Tony Custer, who lives actually not too far from me in New Jersey. And he had mentioned how much the signal system was so much fun to the Kalmbach guys. And they reached out about a book, their first book, actually, on signaling. So the book is called Guide to Signals and Interlockings. Uh, it's available from Kalmbach Books or in a hobby shop near you. And I got to get myself a copy as I start my signals. Um, and I hear it's an excellent book. So congratulations on that. And uh, one more question. How did you get involved with the Modeler's Life podcast? Well, uh, my good friend at work in NJ Transit... Uh, a fellow named Rich Wisniewski is one of my right-hand people on the Onondaga Cutoff. He's a big help during the operating sessions. And Rich routinely is just a great contributor. And he actually not only introduced me to a bunch of people that come to operate the model railroad now, but he also was listening to the podcast and says, Dave, you got to email Lionel Strang. Like, he would love some of the stuff that you're doing on your layout. So I emailed Lionel, and after some back and forth, Lionel says, oh, you should be on the podcast. I said, great. <laughs> and so here we are. All right. Well, there you go, folks. It's all about, you know, meeting people and, and uh, you know, you guys have a great community and I love seeing it. So thanks for talking and enjoy the show. Uh, it's a pleasure. And I think it's like any good organization, it's the people that bring it together. And the more you do with good people, the, the richer life gets. So I appreciate the time. Enjoy the show. Thanks. You too.
So guys, if you've seen my video or like you know me, you know my layout can be run from anywhere in the world just using your smartphone. This right here is what makes it happen. JMRI, Java Model Railroad Interface. And I don't really wanna spend a lot of time here, but that's that's what it is. This is what I hope to do someday. Um, get like interlocking control and stuff. Play the dramatic music, play the dramatic music. I found a chair. Okay, this is where I'm gonna be for a while because I found a chair. It's wonderful. We're here at JMRI. And as I was saying earlier, JMRI, Java Model Railroad Interface, is a great computer software and related hardware components that you can get that kind of ties DCC in with overall layout control. And I use it for remote control operators on my layout, and I have a video on that. Uh, that's something that's really cool that I use JMRI for. Um, you can use it for just smartphone throttles. You can use it for full layout control of turnouts and even like uh, signals and stuff. So yeah, uh, download JMRI if you have a model railroad and, and get to work experimenting, seeing what you can do with it. Watch that signal when the train goes by. It, because it does something interesting which the, the b and o railroad did. This gentleman walked up to me and said, Holiday trains. And he got the February Rail Pace magazine that has my article in it. Thank you, sir. Enjoy. There is nothing hotter than G scale modern prototype trains. Change my mind. You can feel the detail. My favorite standard of modular railroads, the T-Track. You can do so much cool stuff with T-Track. And look, you can even invert the modules like this. This is a similar setup to last year. We have the aircraft carrier, container yard, an old shipyard, dry dock, that's interesting. It's the, it's the, I forgot what it's called. It's the bus from Harry Potter, the night bus. There we go. Um, a couple train station yards. Here comes a fast Amtrak. Alright, let's take a look at some of these fantastic steam locomotives. The Grand Trunk. The Central Vermont. And, I mean, Central Vermont and Grand Trunk, you know, kind of interchangeable, but the CV was the New England American um, version of the Grand Trunk. But lots of fantastic steam locomotive models. Now you see a lot of small N scale layouts here. You see some Z scale. You don't see a lot of small HO. And that's where the Providence Northern Club comes in. Showing that you can model an HO and have a small layout. And I, it's very well done. I love this layout. And they even have a custom paint job on their locomotives. And as you can see, this is their fictional fictional uh, railroad, which is cool. They clearly have a much larger layout that is not portable, but they have a nice portable one too.
We have found a fellow Z-Scale modeler. Very exciting. Very nicely done layout as well. This is all the Marklin stuff. It's not American prototype, but I imagine it is much easier and runs much better. So folks, we found a fellow Z-Scale modeler. What's your name and what's your YouTube channel for the viewers? Uh, my name is Barry Sinell and my YouTube channel is Sunken Mine Railroad. So check them out, uh, Sunken Mine Railroad on YouTube. And your layout, you know, it's, it's very well done. It is Marklin. So this set was given to me by my father and I destroyed it. And then I came back about five years ago, found the pieces of it on eBay and I've been, I built it over four years. It's all capacitive touch relays and, and a control panel. And uh, it has about 36, um, let me back that up. It's battery operated with lithium ion batteries. And uh, it's really what this layout uh, potential was. It was made in 1972, between 72 and 74. And uh, it's just uh, a thing of beauty. It's German and uh, it's Z-scale. Yeah, it, uh, it really brings back a nostalgic feel. And um, to find a Z-Scale modeler is great. Where, where do you find Z-Scale stuff to buy? Do you buy it online, or are there any places uh, locally that you get it? I generally use a place in California called Z-Scale Hobo. Uh, the gentleman's name is Frank, and he gave me a lot of advice. But uh, most of this stuff I found on eBay. Um, in, in my YouTube channel, I go over exactly how I built the whole thing. But it is, uh, Marklin Z-Scale is 50 years old this year. So this is the first set that they actually made 50 years ago. That's very cool. Thanks for sharing. Sure. And I, I, I'm going to operate it, but it's I've designed it so you don't have to touch it. So I can operate all the sidings from these capacitive touch relays like this. And then I can park trains. And the ideal scenario is that I don't have to touch it. Thank you. Very cool, and enjoy the show, and I'm sure everyone's going to enjoy seeing this as much as I have. Thank you so much. Here at the Big E, and it's excellent. We are having a good time, and uh, I'll, I'll avoid swearing so I don't uh, have to bleep it out or whatever. It creates too much editing work. So, you know, anybody that likes the Pennsylvania Marine River around here is an That's So you don't have to bleep that out. That's, that's clean up work. Okay. Thank you. We're going to add on 100 feet east. Yep. The S2 is running at long last. Second only, in my opinion, to the RS 18s. Railsmith models. These are great looking end scale passenger cars. They got some name trains, City of San Francisco, the Cascade, and of course Illinois Central, just Illinois Central. Um, Royal Palm, Connecticut Lions, oh those are cool, those are cool. Um, Empire Builder, North Coast Limited, all the great stuff. If you want to be a nerd all day and spend your entire day looking at slides, they have that here too. <laughs> he is a nerd, confirmed. So, you ask him who he is and what he's known for. 
Who are you and what are you known for? So my name is Greg. I post moderate. I, Turn it around. Uh, 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 uh. So my name is Greg. I post moderately funny content on TikTok and actual serious reviews on YouTube. Uh, the channel of Case Models. Ask him more questions. Uh. Uh. I forgot. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not a people person. This is the top tier content you subscribed for on North Country Trains. This is the top tier content that I make too. Very <laughs> Th Thanks for talking, guys. Conway Scenic bringing a fantastic interactive display to the show. They have an EMD control stand that actually controls this locomotive, Conway Scenic 252. It's a great interactive thing. Um, should I sit down and try it? Let's find hey. out. <laughs> We're notching down. As you can see, the train is uh, slowing down. Notch it up. And that's how it goes. This is terrible video, but I'm losing steam. But that's what this is. Model Railroad Hobbyist, the hobby's free online magazine with a subscription online bonus magazine, as well as Train Masters TV, top-notch quality content there as well. Check them out, Model Railroad Hobbyist, Train Masters TV. Um, and they got some great resources there, great form as well. You might see me posting there once in a while. Uh, so check them out. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you may have seen the infamous Oak Ridge trash guns. And now it looks like you can have them in HO scale. In all the different road names, Cardella going to the New York, Susquehanna, and Western Oak Ridge, the black ones that are unlabeled AIM. I, if I was modeling modern era, I would need these because you see these, especially here in West Springfield, you see these all over the place. So I can't wait to see these on layouts like Dry Hill. They look great. All right, so what's your company and what do you do? Hi, we're uh, Lauren and Andrew from Modern Valley Railroad. We're a Canadian model train retailer, and today we're showing our new private label of the OVR trains HO scale freight cars. All right, so uh, are you talking about these ones? Okay, so I see these cars all over the Northeast when I'm rail fanning. So explain to people who maybe aren't rail fans, what, is, what role do these cars play? So these cars, the main role is moving consolidated waste or rehabilitation or deconstruction of industrial or commercial sites. That's the predominant job. And they also handle scrap of different grades of steel, aluminum, and copper in between smelter to end, end user. Okay, because I, you know, I've seen them for uh, scrap yards. I've seen them going from construction debris, and I think your models are really great looking. Um, is this like your first model as a company? This is the first product we've ever made as a company. This is the first car we ever tooled. They'll be available at the end of February of 23. We have 144 SKU numbers available in our first run, so it's huge. Seems like enough to make to fill an entire prototype layout or more with uh, entire unit trains of these things. So that's great. Yes, we have. Um, so any other uh, models that you want to talk about? So the 64s are available end of February. We have our pipe car, which is available at the end of April. And it's available in CN and CWLX. And this handles drill pipe in 3 inches, 5 inches, 7 inches, and 9 inches. And they're available in singles and six packs. And at the end of May, and you can check this on our website and our Facebook page next month, We'll have our, our first tooled sample of the 6000s, and they'll be available at the end of May. And that's the smaller version of the 6400s. All right. Well, these are absolutely phenomenal looking models and great, you know, for anyone in the modern era to check them out. Uh, Otter Valley Railroad, thanks for talking. Thanks for having me. It's the benchwork people. Modular benchwork construction. These are nice if you aren't all that good with wood. This is a great way to get your bench work down and, and do it in a 
organized manner. They got a fancy lift section here. That's pretty neat. All right, so I, I I already did half this, but I didn't hit record. I'm here with. My name's Lee English of Bowser Manufacturing. So this is the man behind Bowser, and we are here talking about the RS3Ms coming up for, and they're available for pre-order now, right? Yep, they're available. You can get them at most hobby, sh at many hobby shops, and um, we expect delivery sometime around. Late, ne late in the year or early next year. I'd like to say it would come out faster, but we've already got so many projects and everything in the works, I, I know it won't be early. But it's in the works and it's coming soon, and we have a prototype right here. Um, I'll get some close-ups of that, but uh, this is 3D printed, so you 3D print for prototyping. Yeah, we use that a lot for prototypes. Uh, you can draw a lot of things in a computer and make them look wonderful in the computer, but you really don't know until you actually have a model in your hand in order to get a, a real feel for it. And that it, it just looks right. You often make things that are prototype or you think are prototype and they it just doesn't have the right feel. So we do all of this. Uh, this is an odd... This is an odd duck in that there's nothing in a body of the chop nose that I can reuse. It's got a higher long hood. It's got a lower short hood. And, of course, the windows and everything are all its own animal. So I, I wish we had more that we could do. Other railroads would be nice. Well, as a huge d &H fan and modeler, I really appreciate them coming out, and I'm going to have to decide which one i want to pre-order because i love them all um and so the, the there's only one surviving is that correct or a couple there's just the western new york and pa and that's a beautiful paint scheme so <coughs> so i would suggest you get out and pre-order them because there's not going to be much left when they come in and to get measurements for this, you went out to visit the one remaining one in, on the western New York and Pennsylvania, right? Yes, we did. We went up in the winter time, and they actually pulled it into the shop so that we weren't going to freeze to death. But uh, it was really a cold engine when they got it in since it was about 10 degrees when we were up there. But they were wonderful people, and they've done a really wonderful paint job on it. And if you ever look at it, it's, uh, it's really dramatic. But we'll be doing um, all these D&H. Will there be more in the future? Probably. All right. Well, thanks for talking about right. this fantastic locomotive, and enjoy the show. All right. You too, and have fun. Mini prints hard at work making 3D models of various folks. Check out all their great products. I'm going to have to order some rail bikes for a diorama project I want to take on. They have 3D printed rail bikes. Can you believe that? They have literally anything if you're looking for something special and you're like oh no one's gonna make this well maybe mini prints did so check them out that painful quest for z-scale equipment it is so hard to find z-scale equipment it drives me crazy i just want to buy some z-scale equipment if anyone's selling z-scale equipment please please let me know i will buy it from you i'm desperate i don't care what it is i just want to buy it this is all n scale i love n scale but i'm in z-scale Another new manufacturer, new locomotive, and we got the entire design process of all the prototype specific details. That's always great to see. Looks like a great assembly. Yep. 
There's my dad's yeah. truck. There's an NCT right there, folks. <laughs> in 2023, you can ride these very rails on the Adirondack Railroad. This is just south of Tupper Lake. Check them out. Um, watch the website and sign up for the email list to get updates because the schedule isn't official yet, but it's going to be happening. So stay tuned. Microtrains, manufacturer of great equipment in N, but also Z scale. And if you know me, you know I like the Z-scale part of that. Got some great weathered models here, too. Look at these. All right, guys, I hit the jackpot here at Tom's Trains. We got a L&N boxcar. We have a Sioux line, and I just got to make sure I have still have money. And as long as I do, we'll be getting these. So we're here at the Rail Explorers, which is a rail bike company. So for those who don't know what a rail bike is, um, can you share a little bit? Uh, yeah, a rail bike is a four-wheeled vehicle, goes on the railroad. Rail Explorers, we have two and four-seater versions, and we run tours with them. So you leave from one location, you pedal out, and you pedal back to where you started. <laughs> All right, and so share a little bit about each location and like what, what, what's the reason to do each uh, ride at the various locations? Yeah, definitely. So we do tours on these rail bikes in a few locations in the U.S., uh, closest one to here to the Amherst Rail Show is uh, Newport, Rhode Island. Uh, we run tours out of there. They go uh, about six miles, uh, take about two hours. Awesome ocean views in Rhode Island. You're, you're looking out at the coast. You're going through some wooded areas, too. Extremely easy pedal. The grade in Rhode Island is flat. Uh, super easy to do. Uh, we have a couple locations in upstate New York, one in uh, Cooperstown and one in the Catskills in uh, Phoenicia, New York. Both of those have beautiful wooded stretches. Um, you have mountains on both sides of you. There are some grades at those locations, but because of that, we have electric assist motors on those rail bikes. So wherever you do it, um, it's an effortless ride. It's really easy. All right, those uh, sound great. And there used to be in Lake Clear and uh, Saranac Lake, New York. I rode that several years ago. And fortunately, those rails are gone, but... Um, there's, there's some great locations, so uh, check them out. And uh, anything else you want to share about the Rail Explorers? Yeah, just want to add that it's, uh, it's a really family-friendly experience. So we can do groups, um, 10 and plus. There's a discount. Uh, it's friendly for kids of all ages, um, go from zero to any age on this ride. Everyone has fun on it. It's a great alternative way to go out and, uh, and experience the rails. Thank you for talking, and uh, enjoy the show. Yeah, you too. Thank you. Okay, guys, we're here at White River Publications, and we're here with... George Duca. I'm uh, signing books for uh, Just Been Released. And so this is the book right here. So that's, that's really cool. That's, so it's just a book of, like, all the different modeling you've done? Yeah, there's uh, three or four articles in there that have been published in RMC, but most of the material is all new. And it's a variety of stuff. It's uh, rolling stock. There's a bit on uh, my layout and uh, how to kit bash and uh, clean up buildings and weathering rolling stock. And if you're if you're wondering, well, how how is this guy's modeling? You know, if you're wondering about that, check out his blog, White River Division. You're going to see some phenomenal stuff. Um, so what what's the what's an example of like the kind of stuff you post on your blog? Stuff that I've done on the layout, I try to post a bit of that. There's a little bit of rail fanning in there, uh, Canadian prototype stuff and uh, New England prototype stuff. And whatever project I'm recently working on, it could be building a, a craftsman kit or doing a piece of rolling stock or detailing an engine, or just whatever seems to be uh, on the go at the time. All right. Well, that sounds good. And I, I know I see that, I see that uh, a lot as I go through my blog roll, but that's always one of the first ones I check. So thanks for uh, blogging and, and being here and uh, be checking out your book. And uh, you folks should uh, check out both the blog and the book. So thanks for talking. Average and scale train speed, except this one's realistic.
I don't know what's going on here, but I'm loving it. I, I don't know what's going on, but I'm loving it. Everybody join. Do any of you guys want to share what's going on here? What's going on here? You're on camera, guys. All right, all right, we're, we're joining. We're joining here. We're in this. We're in this, guys. All right, go back, go back, go back. Come on, come on. What's going on? I've been thrown into antics. Seashore Trolley Museum. I haven't been to many trolley museums, but it's my favorite. Um, I've actually only been to two, but uh, we go to this a uh, lot uh, when we go to Maine, and it's a great experience. It's all electrified. A lot of a lot of museums are still diesel, and this one's all electrified, and it's a great run out in Kennebunk, Maine. So check them out. So new thing is coming or the model train aspect at the Seashore Trolley Museum. It's uh, pretty exciting. Can't wait to visit that in the future. Buildings will cl close for vendors and exhibitors at 5.30. It's closed to the public. See you tomorrow. All right, Aaron, how do you think the show went this year? It's only end of day one, but it's the end of the show for me. So how is it going so far? End of day one. I haven't seen this many people since 2008 at this show. This is good attendance. All right. It's, it's been very good. And uh, how about like layouts, uh, vendors, manufacturers, uh, how do you think the turnout is for them? Well, uh, they look pretty good to me, but I haven't been in tabletop scale model railroading for years. Yeah, we're dealing with some bigger stuff at the mill. <laughs> yeah, a little bit bigger. So, uh, yeah, good seeing you at the show, and uh, check out Millbrook Railroad on YouTube. Yep, thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.